Florida has a subtropical climate. It is the closest state to the equator, with the exception of Hawaii. Exotic pets are showing up in our pet shops by the thousands, and many of these exotic pets outgrow their cages and subsequently get released here in Florida. Florida's subtropical climate is so conducive to these different exotic species that they've started to multiply, and in many cases have spread, posing a real threat to our native wildlife here. Many fragile, endangered, or protected species are at risk here. The effect is real. Many of these species' numbers have already declined. The Cuban anole, the Cuban night anole, iguana, the Cuban tree frog, water ballast, the Nile monitor, the tegu lizard, are all invasive species with established populations here in Florida. There's one right there on the bank, isn't there? Is no, that thick? Good eye, though. All right, this looks real hard. We definitely don't want to miss him. Big old hole in the ground here. Get her, comes out, grab it. And in many cases, these aren't just under the radar reptiles, they're apex predators like the Burmese python, speckled caiman, rock python, the green anaconda, the oscar, the peacock bass, the snakehead. These are all predatory fish. They eat our native fish, including some of our apex fish. The speckled caiman, the Burmese python, the green anaconda, these are apex predators in their territories. No other state or area has experienced the devastation created from the introduction of these non-native species. I mean, the Burmese python was filmed recently after eating a large alligator. These apex predators have no mercy. It's a size matters situation. And boy, is it a big situation. By no means is the battle over, but let's not go as far to say as the battle is lost. There's a lot of things we can do, and I think the first step to preventing this problem is to understand it and help educate everybody on this problem. There's large strides that can be made in order to prevent these kind of outbreaks from happening. Educating people on these problems can help prevent these problems, or at least mitigate them, and slow the spread of some of these invasive species. This is a snake video, so I just want to specifically talk about the invasive snake species here in Florida. A loose cobra got out in Ocala, Florida, and that got widespread news coverage. However, that's just one specimen and doesn't pose a real threat here in Florida. While all these different animal species pose a potential threat to our native wildlife, the Burmese python has collected more interest and news media coverage than any other invasive species in the United States of America. This guy's not scared. Of There's one right there on the bank, isn't there? Look at this guy. Is that? I mean, I'm just a couple of inches away from him right now. And while the boa constrictor, African rock python, yellow anaconda, and green anaconda are all huge constrictors, they don't have settled populations here in Florida just yet. This is not the case with the Burmese python. The Burmese python can eat prey items as big as the white-tailed deer and even the alligator. A study published in 2011 stated that in populations where the Burmese python was established, up to 90% of the mammal population had decreased. The only animal considered a predator to these enormous snakes is the American alligator and conservation projects have led to the increase in alligator populations. But let's not forget, size matters. So if the snake is bigger than the alligator, the snake will win the battle. More than 1,330 wild-caught Burmese pythons have already been found in the Florida Everglades. On average, a full-grown adult Burmese python is around 12 feet long. However, one specimen was reported at 18 feet 10 inches long. The Burmese python has reached the minimum threshold to be considered a true invasive species, with over a thousand specimens caught. The devastation caused by Hurricane Andrew is said to be responsible for the release of so many of these exotic snakes. When a large breeding facility was compromised due to the high winds created, the Burmese python starts its life out in much the same way as many other reptiles, as an egg. As young snakes grow, they're primarily arboreal, 
but when they gain girth, they become ground-dwelling snakes. This species is primarily nocturnal, which makes locating them quite difficult. In test areas designed to determine how effective python hunting actually is, less than 1% of these species were captured. This will take a full-fledged effort in order to get this population in control. If as few as 1% of these pythons are discovered, and they've already captured over 1,300 specimens, that means there could potentially be over 130,000 wild Burmese pythons in the Florida Everglades. That's it for this episode. Make sure to go back and check out the previous four episodes. This is the fifth episode in the seven-part snake series. Make sure to hit that like button if you like this video, and subscribe. Thanks again. All right, now we just need to wait around and let this guy cross the road so he can be safe and free.